Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Mark Apen, here to bring you another exciting episode of Bug Smashers. Nope, this one's a Slashers episode. You know what, got no time for this. I'm, I'm going to my trailer. Wow. Well, since Mark Avent so rudely didn't ask, this episode is about another exciting insurance bug. Let's get slashing. Bug smashes! All right, so as I probably said in the intro, we've got another insurance bug today. Uh, this one involving ships inside ships. So as you can see, I've got my cyclone here, um, very tidily parked in the back of my cutlass. Uh, this would happen with any ships, but this is specifically the uh, repro case I need to test. So, what happens? If we make a claim on this cutlass, when we have a cyclone or a Nox or any other thing stored in the back, um, we make a claim on the cutlass, the ship inside, <laughs> or the vehicle inside, just gone forever. So, to show you uh, in the current state how it looks when it's busted, let me fly over here to this ASOP terminal. And you'll see I've got two cyclones. One of them is out on the pad, the other one is stored. So there's two in there. We've got this parked out here. Now what I need to do is go to Alisar. And now we're gonna make a claim on that cutlass. And I'm just flying in here to save time, make it real quick. There we go. One on Shubin. Make a claim. File claim. All right, cool. So that has been filed. We're gonna go back to Shubin. And we're not uh, gonna quantum travel because we don't want this video to be uh, 30 minutes. And voila, there is only one cyclone here. So the one inside is gone forever now. Um, really unfortunate. Uh, so how about I break down why this is happening so you guys don't have to worry about losing your ships. So we're gonna hop into the code here. And this is in the insurance system. Um, in fact, this is, uh, so if we scroll up, the function is process claim to next step. And we're particularly concerned with this callback that we have in here called our entitlement exchange callback. So there was actually a different bug in the past where ships that, let me see if I can uh, recall this correctly. Basically ships that you bought or added to your account after a database had been set up um, were not insurable ships. So, so to fix this problem, we needed to have this entitlement exchange where basically we're like, all right, this old ship is now the new one and switch all the web information so everything is properly routed. Uh, so this is the final step of insurance once we made this exchange. And to make sure that everything has happened properly, we will, uh, we now are tracking two ships. We have your old ship, the one that got destroyed or abandoned or whatever, and the new ship that insurance has just given you. So the old ship, we need to take this and say it legally no longer belongs to you. We need to clean it up, get rid of it, because you've got your new ship from insurance. So what we do is we do a change legal owner for entity right here. And we're doing that on the old entity. We're gonna remove it from your legal ownership. And then for good measure, if the ship isn't spawned, this old one, we're gonna remove it right away from persistence. Um, this is what we were currently doing. And this is why the bug is happening. Um, this is what we need to fix. So the crux of the issue here is if we inspect a change legal owner for entity, We've got in our persistent data manager, we've got a couple things going on here. But basically, if we change the legal ownership of a ship, we're also changing the legal ownership of everything beneath it. So all of the doors on the ship, all of the windows, turrets, everything that is a child of the ship, the legal ownership of those things need to change as well. So like I legally own my ship, which means I also legally own all the stuff inside. So this is where the problem comes in. Because the old ship still has your cyclone in it. Uh, we have now changed the legal ownership of that cyclone to be the universe. It's not owned by you anymore, um, which is why it will not show up in your ASOP terminals. Now, technically in the persistent database, it is still there, um, but 
it is actually <laughs> not fit, not legally owned by you. Um, there's several <laughs> types of ownerships, um, but that is the one that Aesop Terminal cares about. So we need to fix this. So if we hop back here, we are going to delete these two lines of code here. And there is one function I, I have not filled out yet, but it's what we're going to fill out in this video. So we're going to call this function called clean up old insured entity. And we're going to do that with the old entity ID. And we're going to do that with contained vehicles. Oh, no, I think I called it. Yes. OK. All right. So if we inspect this function here, it should be totally empty because we're going to implement it here on camera. All right, there we go. So what we need to do in this new function is similar to before, we need to change the legal ownership of the old ship, the one that we're getting rid of that I no longer own. However, what we need to do then afterwards for every ship inside this vehicle, we need to loop, or for every vehicle inside the ship we're claiming on, we need to look at each of those and then change its legal ownership back to being the player. Because remember, because everything is like a tree structure, vehicles inside the other one will get legally changed too. So we're gonna let them get changed and then we're just gonna change them back um, to be the player that made the claim. So if I just bring up my reference code over here, the first thing we need to do is grab a reference to our persistent data manager. All right, now once we have that, there's gonna be a couple things that we need to do. Uh, the first thing is we need to determine if our ship has been spawned yet. Uh, the reason this is important is because there's actually two cases that we need to do different things for based on if the ship is still around when we claim insurance or if it's been despawned by ATC or by whatever means. So the way we do that is just need to check to see if it's still sticking around in our entity system. Alrighty. Now the next step, something that we were already doing before, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this for the sake of time, is we need to change the legal ownership of the root of the old ship. We were already doing this before, so it still needs to be our first step here. But now that we've changed the ownership, we need to go back <laughs> and change the legal ownership for the ships that were inside it so that they still show up in our ASOP terminal. The way we do that is we need to loop over every ship that we have stored. By the way, I didn't mention this earlier, but this, uh, this list here, it's a vector of contained vehicles. Uh, this is actually code I added just before we started this video, but basically when we do a query earlier up in the call stack, we needed to grab the vehicle anyway from persistence, so we just slightly changed that argument. So it would not only grab the vehicle, but it would grab all the items inside it that are also of a vehicle type. A uh, small change I made before this, uh, just not showing it in the video right now. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to iterate over all of these contained vehicles. So we'll do that here. Um, for the programmers in the audience, this will look a little weird to you because I'm setting this I to start at one. And the reason we're doing that is because in this list of vehicles, the first one is the vehicle itself, the cutlass. So we want to ignore that. The cutlass is not inside itself. We've already changed this legal ownership. So don't worry about that. So we're going to start at one or start at I equals one.
And so what we're doing here is we're changing its legal ownership of all of the contained ships to be what their previous owner was. Um, this will look a little funny because it looks like we're setting its legal owner to what its legal owner is. Um, that is just because this data is cached from before we did this change up here. So it's setting it back to what it was before. That's the important bit. All right, so this is really just the core of what we needed to fix this bug. Um, is just this little for loop here. However, there is one other thing that we need to do while we're in here. In this for loop, we want to check if the ship is despawned. And I'm going to copy and paste this code um, just for sake of time. So we have one check if our ship is despawned. Now I mentioned before we have different types of ownership in the game, legal ownership and physical ownership. Um, for a variety of reasons, we also want to change the item's physical ownership if it's not spawned. Um, this is so, what you'll see in a moment, so we're moving uh, persistent item's parent. We're going to change that. And the reason for that is after the for loop, you'll remember the code that we deleted we had before. Uh, we need to remove the old ship from persistence only if it's despawned. So we just tack that on the end here. And what this will do is it will not uh, remove the ships inside the ships from persistence. Um, and so yeah, let's see if I've worded that properly. Your Cyclone or your Nox or whatever is in your Cutlass, we've changed the legal ownership. However, if the ship was despawned, we were also gonna remove it anyway with this code. We had this code before. So we need to prevent that too. So there's really two things we need to prevent here, legal ownership and physical ownership just happens to be physical ownership, in this case, only matters if the ship is not spawned. Great? Okay. So this is uh, all of the code we're actually going to need to make this work. We've just filled up this cleanup old insured entity function. And remember, we called that from the broader entitlement exchange function back here. So this is really the last step of getting you a brand new ship when you claim insurance. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build, which should take about five years, and I'll get back to you then and we'll show you this bug uh, hopefully should be gone. Okay, so we're back in game now. We've got the Cyclone in our Cutlass. I'm gonna go through the same uh, repro steps that I did in the beginning and we're gonna see if hopefully we don't lose this forever. All right, so we're just gonna fly over here back to the terminal just so we can show that we've got a, yep, we've got two Cyclones there. One's on the pad, cool, all right. So we're going to go to Alasar and let's make a claim. I'm stuck. Oh, okay, we're unstuck. We're unstuck, fam. Hang on. Keep this in. <laughs> Keep this in. <laughs> all right, Justin. Oh, God, this AI is pushing me around. OK, all right. All right, now we're doing it. Um, so here's our Cutlass, right where we left it. Let's make a claim. All right. Now, now we, uh, now we see Shubin. Shubin? Yeah, Shubin, okay. All right, and there's both of our Cyclones. We didn't lose it forever. So just to recap, we needed to, after changing the legal ownership of our Cutlass, we needed to go in and look at all of the vehicles inside our Cutlass and change the legal ownership of those back to our player who owns the, who owned the Cutlass. That way they're not lost forever on our insurance uh, terminal. And that about wraps it up. Time to check back in with Mark. So as you guys saw, we had a fun little insurance claim bug with a ship in a ship. But unlike dealing with those pesky insurance companies, we just said, hey, developer, let's go fix it. Wasn't too bad, right? Yeah, insurance, no problem. One-sixth of the US economy, solved. A few easy, lines of code, few right? few lines of code, <laughs> easy fix. Done and done. Yeah. Well, hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, bug smasher. <sighs> bug slashers. Smasher. Smasher. I'm going to my trailer.
Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.